Other hand, God bless you, choir. This time we're going to direct your attention to the Word of God in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, 13th, 14th verses in your hearing on today. Psalms chapter 37. In the word of God, it reads on today, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out their swords and have bent their bow to cast down the poor, the needy, and to slay such as be upright in conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bow shall be broken. The little that a righteous man have is better than the riches of many wicked. Amen. And then I also want to uh, talk to you today. Uh, you may be seated. I want to talk also from the scripture concerning the importance of waiting on Jesus. Amen. Waiting on Jesus. Uh, the Word of God is certainly very important. And, and we as a people of God have to learn how to wait on God. David that said I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living he said wait on him be of good courage he shall strengthen thine heart wait I say upon the Lord uh, one thing that we as a people of God do not want to do and that is to wait too long for anything. Uh, because we live in a world that whatever we want, what we want, uh, we want to get it right away. And the quicker, the better. Amen. With all of this technology that we have out today, cell phones and text messaging and uh, we have the Facebook and Twitter and email uh, people can really communicate very quickly amen whatever's on their mind they can project it wherever uh, their thoughts are they can project and uh, all of these technologies does not help us when it comes to uh, our patients because they just fuel, amen, puts coals on the fire of our impatience. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. I was thinking about that storm that came up this past week and how uh, the newscasters were projecting the storm. They were talking about where the storm was and how it was in Dexter and down in Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor and with the technology that they had, uh, they couldn't tell just exactly where the storm was, but they could see the graphs on the screen. And that was Channel 2. And, and they were saying that according to the graph, they could picture the storm. It was the right condition for the storm and began to uh, say that uh, the storm 
should be striking any moment, even though they didn't see it. They said, but the storm should be striking any moment. And before you knew it, uh, cell phones were sending pictures in, amen, of the uh, wind and the hurricane and all the destruction. It was almost in real time. Uh, they were showing from cell phones uh, the devastation that was going on around. And, you know, I was thinking, I said, Lord, th this is really something. You know, technology is something. Uh, when, you know, you can get these pictures off cell phones and they can project images and things, you know, just in the spur of a moment. You know, it just goes to show you that we really have to be careful about what we do, don't we? Amen. They can take these cell phones and project images. Uh, then what about you and I? Amen. Doesn't take much to project uh, an image. Doesn't take much to show how we're looking or how we're acting. Amen. And don't get mad. And don't have somebody take your picture and flash it across the screen. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. Because of an act of impatience. And so uh, we have to be very careful about how we act and the way we do things because uh, we don't like to wait on nothing. You know, people today will run you right off the road. Can I get a witness here today? I don't know, I must be getting older. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, folk driving crazy. They will drive all up on you. I'm talking about enforce you right off the road. And don't put your blink on. Because you think people would, you know, be courteous enough to, to let you get over. No, but they'll speed up. <laughs> just to get ahead of you. And so, you know, you know, people are very, very impatient. When we want service, we want it now. Amen. We go to the restaurant, we want to eat like right now. Amen. And they don't feed us within a reasonable amount of time, we're going to get up and go. And when it comes to traveling, we want to travel. Uh, if we're waiting on a bus or waiting on transportation, we want it like right now. And if it's not coming, then we get upset, you know. But when it comes to God, we have to learn to wait on God. Can I get a witness here today? You know, you just can't do what you want to do. You got to wait on it. See, God is not concerned about our attitudes. He ain't concerned about us getting huffy and puffy and getting all angry and vain, stretching out, and, you know, and the matter we get, the calmer God is. Can I get a witness here? And see, we have to learn, as children of God, we have to learn, you know, how to wait on God. And many of us, we have learned to wait on him. Amen. We've had to wait on Jesus. Some of us, we, uh, we have tried to, to force God's hand. But, honey, you can't force God. Sometimes God will move fast. Sometimes he'll shock you. He'll move so fast. And there are times that God can move so slow, you'll be wondering, Lord, where are you? Amen. But yet we still have to trust in the Lord. And that's why the Bible encourages us to trust in the Lord with what? All of our heart lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our steps so you know while we're waiting on god we have to understand that our faith is being tried amen god is trying our faith god is testing us he wants to find out what's in you amen and so god will just hold things up on you amen and you just got to learn how to wait on him you can be praying, you can be 
uh, seeking God, asking God to move in your life, and, and sometimes God will just hold it up. Amen. Just hold things up. It doesn't mean that God has left you. It doesn't mean that he has forsaken you. But God wants us to wait on him. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor again and say, neighbor, did you hear what the pastor said? Tell him you got to wait on him. Amen. Oh, yes. You, you, you got to wait on him. And so, uh, you know, the Bible tells us about uh, the time when uh, Paul had that thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan that came to buffet him, lest he should be exalted above measure. He was one that I had seen great revelations, and he was a very powerful man of God. He One had laid hands on people, healed them, and, and uh, God had blessed him in a great way, shown him great revelations. He was caught up into the third heavens, and he had seen things that was unspeakable. But then yet the Lord allowed him to have a thorn in his flesh. The Bible says it was a messenger of Satan that came to buffet him, lest he should be exalted above measure. Well, the Lord allowed for him to have this thorn in the flesh. And according to the history, they said it was some type of sickness that uh, the Apostle Paul had. And yet uh, he prayed three times that the Lord would remove this thing, but God did not take it. But the Bible says that the Lord let Paul know that his grace was sufficient for him. Amen. Paul began to say, and as he wrote it on record, he said, Therefore, I rather glorify God in my afflictions that the power of Christ might rest upon me. He said, For when I'm weak, then am I strong. And what the Apostle Paul had learned is that God had allowed for him to have this thorn in the flesh, amen, and yet God blessed him in spite of. You know, it's amazing what God will allow his people to go through. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Many of you all right now, you're going through things, you're going through your tests and trials, and yet you wonder sometimes why you're going through your tests and trials, but uh, we have to learn that through everything that we go through, God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. And yes, we have to trust in God. We, we can't let things change us because things will change you. Uh, the enemy will come. He'll have you uh, backing up in your mind, acting ugly, taking things and matters into your own hands. But yet we serve a miracle working God. Amen. We serve a God that's got all power in his hands. And so uh, the Bible tells us about the time when Job, he was going through uh, his trouble and how Job was doing good. And then all of a sudden, all kinds of trouble began to break out in his life. Amen. Job, uh, he could have taken things personally. But, you know, uh, thank God he had a close relationship with the Lord. Amen. And uh, God, he's going to hold some things up from us as children of God. Everything's not going to go your way. Amen. It's not going to go your way. Uh, everything is not going to move in the direction that you want it to move in. But yet God wants us to develop uh, some character and some patience in him. Can I get a witness here? Amen. So Job, he found himself losing everything. His oxes, his asses, his sheep, his cattle. And, and the fire of God fell from heaven. And the Bible says that uh, the strong wind came out of the wilderness, blew the house down where his children were, and his sons were destroyed. And on top of that, his wife told him to curse God and die. Amen. His friends stood around him. Nobody was able to encourage him and to lift him up. Amen. But yet, uh, he had to encourage himself in the Lord. Body broke out with boils. Amen. Nobody was there to speak in his behalf. Uh, but yet he was going through the storm of his life where he really had it to wait on God. But through everything that he went through, he said, I know 
uh, that my redeemer liveth, and that in the latter days he shall stand upon the earth. He said, and though these skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Amen. And so he believed that the Lord was going to raise him up, and God did raise him up. Didn't raise him up in his, his time, but raised him up in God's time. And it's important for us to know, children of God, that God's got a time. Amen. And we got the weight on the Lord. The enemy is fighting us, but we've got the weight on God. The enemy is trying to uh, hinder us and stop us, but we've got to stand still and see the glory of God. And that's what I love about God, honey. If you wait on him, the Lord will show up. He may not come as the saying goes when you want him, but honey, he's always right on time. Oh, yes, he is. He's right on time. <laughs> Hallelujah. And these words that David was speaking about, <laughs> amen. And I'm trying to tie this sermon in where uh, David had gone through all of his afflictions dealing with the wicked, amen, and how the wicked had tried to rise up against him. And uh, uh, he found himself going through some things. He was chosen of God and he was anointed by God but yet that did not stop him from going through the storms that he had to go through in his life and I come to tell you children of God God when he has his hands on you he will prepare you for the storm that he's taking you through amen as long as God is on your side Honey, you don't have nothing to worry about, but the people can plot against you. They can scheme. They can lie. They can try to tear you down. The devil can rise up on the left hand, on the right hand. The, the elements can break out. All types of things can be going wrong, but the Bible lets us know that if God be for you, Honey, who can be against you? <laughs> oh, yes, hallelujah. David <laughs> had to deal with the wicked, and he had to deal with the plotters and the schemers. <laughs> he had to deal with the haters and those that were <laughs> trying to stamp him out. But yet through everything that David went through, <laughs> he knew the importance of waiting on God. <laughs> and that's why David, he put it on record and said, I had fainted <laughs> unless I had believed to see the goodness <laughs> of the Lord in the land of living. <laughs> and then he just spoke to the church and <laughs> he let the church know just wait on God. <laughs> Amen. You got to wait on him. <laughs> and while you're waiting, you got to keep on waiting. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? Amen. <laughs> and while you're waiting to wait, <laughs> you got to keep on waiting. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Many of y'all been tried in the fire. <laughs> Sometimes it seemed like God has not been around you, nowhere around you. Oh, yet the enemy has always seemed to show his head popping up. You don't know which direction he's coming from, but yet he's popping up, trying to shoot his daggers at you, trying to get you off guard, trying to get you off your square. Amen. Because the enemy, he knows that if he can get you out of place, that he can come in and he can wreak havoc in your life. Lord have mercy but as children of God sometimes we got to learn how to just hunker down can I get a witness we got to learn how to put our confidence in God and just shelter ourselves in that when the strong wind is blowing and the enemy is raging against our life and we can feel the windbreakers dashing trying to overthrow us Lord Lord, have mercy that we can just hunker down, get into your secret place, your closet, because the storm is passing over. But honey, you just hang in there. You hold on to God. You wait on him because it won't be long before that storm will pass. Can I get a witness? And while you're hunkering down, you got to learn how to be in of good courage. Can I get a 
witness here. Amen. Be of good courage. Somebody say, man, I got a storm in my life. And the enemy is coming in. He's trying to take me out. But I come to tell you, children of God, I don't care how hard it gets and how much the enemy is coming out against you and how the devil's just rising up and coming out with his crazy self. Honey, you just hunker down and you get close to Jesus and you just wait on him. Can I get a witness here today? I don't care how the enemy talking and how he's whispering in your ear and how he's telling you different things. You can't listen to the devil because, honey, the devil is a liar. Devil will tell you some crazy things and all he wants you to do is come out on his territory so he can blow you away. But I come to tell you that if you wait on the Lord and while you're waiting on him if you encourage yourself if you be of good courage honey God will come by he'll give you your second win oh can I get a witness how many know God will encourage your heart Lord have mercy somebody say man I've been in the dumps and I've been down and out and the devil has tried to discourage me but I come to tell you that's nothing like the Lord when the Lord comes by in the midst of your trouble and comes by and strengthens your heart can I get a witness here somebody said man I was about ready to give up I was about ready to throw in the towel but the Lord came in in the midst of my battle and the Lord came in and gave me strength now I can hear the word say lift up your head hold ye gates and be ye lifted up you everlasting doors in the king of glory he shall come in who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. My God from glory. So David, he picked up his pen. He talked about the wicked. He talked about how the enemy would try to rise up against us. But then at the same time, he wanted to encourage the people of God to wait on the Lord, can I get a witness here today? And once again, while you're waiting, don't you give up and get frustrated, but you just keep on waiting. Don't try to figure out God, but honey, you just trust in him. Don't lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways, you've got to acknowledge him, and the Lord will direct you. And while the Lord's directing you, no time to be backing up, no time to be be giving up. No time to be frustrated and thrown in the towel. I like what that young man preached last week. He said every time he felt like throwing in the towel, he said the Lord would throw it right back. Can I get a witness here? How many of y'all been there? Every time you felt like giving up, every time you threw that towel in, God threw the towel right back. Lord have mercy. You said, Lord, I was about ready to give up, but I thank you, Lord, for being my helper. I thank you, Lord, for being my strength. I thank you, Lord, that when my spirit gets low, you come to raise me up. Can I get a witness here today? How many of y'all been so down that you couldn't hardly make it? You were dragging around, but yet you pressed your way into the house of God. You didn't know God had a surprise for you when you came in the temple. You came in with your head down. You came in all defeated. You came in crying the blues. But the Lord met you in the midst of the service. Oh, can I get a witness here today? That's what I love about God. Don't ever give up on God because God never gives up on us. The very thing we need, God is here to give it to 
us. We walk by faith and not by sight. You don't walk by your feelings. You don't walk with the emotions because sometimes you don't feel like walking with God. Sometimes you feel like dragging your feet. Can I get a witness here? You're not always on the mountaintop, but sometimes you're down in the valley. But while you're down in the valley, you got to learn how to wait on him. You got to wait on him until you the anointing come. You got to wait on him until God comes to pick you up. You got to wait on him until the wind of God blew, blows on you. You got to wait on him until God gives you strength. A minute you've been down, but the Lord have met you in the midst of your valley. And that's one of the greatest experiences that a man can ever have. And had you not waited on God in the midst of your trouble, you wouldn't know that God is a healer. Oh, can I get a witness here today? Some of you are about ready to give up, but God threw that towel back. You got running in your feet. You got praises on your lips. You got joy in your dance because the Lord has given you strength. Somebody ought to give God the praise. Somebody ought to give God the glory. Oh, yeah, David said, my foot almost slipped. My step was well not gone. He said, but I thank God that when I got in the sanctuary, God began to speak to my mind. Can I get a witness here today? Somebody feel like giving up, but I come to tell you like David said, honey, you got to wait on the Lord. And don't you give up on God because God has strengthened you your heart and when your help come you'll be able to fight the devil when your help come you'll tell the devil back up when your help come God will lift your head up when your help come the Lord will give you strength somebody to give God the praise give God the glory and tell the devil I'm not going down but I'm going up the harder it gets the more God is able to help me if I wait on him he'll give me my strength if I wait on him he'll give me a double anointing if I wait on him he'll fight my battle if I wait on him he'll break the devil's back no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper because God is on my side my heart's been broken but the Lord has taken my heart out and performed Formed open heart surgery, put my heart right back, and I can tell you, God amend your heart. Can I get a witness here? He's a heart fixer, he's a helper, he's a keeper, he'll give you strength. God will make your way. Hold on, wait on him. Don't you give up on God. The best is yet to come. God's got a blessing for you if you wait on him. God's got a blessing for you if you hold on to him God's got a blessing for you if you stay with him oh yes God's got a blessing for you you just wait on him don't you worry about the wicked don't you worry about the devil and what the enemy is doing honey you just go on and wait on him can I get a witness here today amen if God's on your side the Lord will make a way for you can I get a witness here today Oh, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. David could pick up his pen and write and said, I once was young, but now I'm old. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, though his seed begging bread. David said, there are many a days I had to encourage myself. Nobody to encourage me. Nobody to help me out. Nobody to pat me on my back. You wait on him. Don't you give up on God. God never gives up on you. Come on, give God the praise and say yes, Lord. Lord have 
mercy. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, the devil. <laughs> he don't want us to make it. <laughs> devil don't want us to stand. <laughs> but thank God there's a bomb in Gilead. <laughs> there's a physician in the house. <laughs> there's a doctor <laughs> that's got everything we need. <laughs> Can I get a witness here today? <laughs> Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, <laughs> I'll never give up on God <laughs> because God never gives up on me. <laughs> Come on and give God the praise. <laughs> Come on and give God the glory and say, yes, Lord. Oh, wait on him. You just wait on the Lord. I don't care how bad it gets. Honey, you just wait on him. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. The just shall live by faith. Uh, just ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, where's your faith at? Oh, just tell them, say, neighbor, it gets hard sometimes, but my faith is being stretched. Can I get a witness here? God's just stretching my faith. God's just building me up. God's just making me stronger. God's just helping me out a little bit longer while he allows me to go through the very things I go through. God is stretching. God is stretching, God is stretching, stretching my faith. Oh yeah, wait on him, wait on him, wait on him, don't give up, just wait on him, wait on him, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say. Wait, I say. Wait, I say. Wait on the Lord. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> you know what I love about God? <laughs> Honey, God's blessings are so awesome. <laughs> They're worth waiting on. Can I get a witness here today? <laughs> I said, I eyes have not seen. <laughs> have not heard. You know what the devil want to do for many of us? Devil want to cut off our vision so that we can't see what God has in store for us. But honey, God's got some blessings for you. You ought to look beyond the trouble. You ought to see the blessing that God has in store. And just say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the vision. I'm going through hell, but the best is yet to come. I'm waiting on you in the midst of my trouble. I'm waiting on you because the best is yet to come. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. And keep on waiting. Wait on him and keep on waiting. Don't get fidgety. Don't get antsy. Don't go to trying to figure out things your own way. Just keep on waiting. Can I get a win? Don't cast away your confidence, which has great recompense and reward. But you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. For yet in a little while, he that shall come, he will come and will not tarry. God is coming. You better reach out for him. God is coming. You better reach up and grab him. God is coming. You better hold on to him. God is coming. And don't let him go. Wait on him, honey. Wait on him. Don't get weaker, get stronger. Let him talk. 
Let them say what they want to say. You just tell them I'm waiting on him. Can I get a witness? I'm waiting on my blessing. I'm waiting on my anointing. I'm waiting on my God. God's going to show up, show out. God's got something for me. It is worth waiting on. Can I get a witness here today? Come on and give God the glory and say, yes, Lord. I'm telling you, uh, uh, the devil's a future snatcher. Oh, yeah. I see he's a future snatcher. Amen. He'll snatch you right out of your destiny. Can I get a witness here? And some of y'all will tell the devil, devil, you a liar. Y'all tell him, devil, you a liar. What God has for me is for me. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> you ought to tell the devil, devil, <laughs> I'm getting mad. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> I'm getting mad <laughs> because God promised it to me. <laughs> I'm getting mad. <laughs> Come on and give God the praise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Wait on him. 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 And be of good courage. <laughs> he shall strengthen. Mm. Mm. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Woo One writer said, they didn't wait on him. He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Can I get a witness here today? You keep waiting on him. God's got a second, third, fourth, fifth wind for you. God's got some winds to come that you can just soar on him. Can I get a witness here? You'll be high and lifted up saying, look where the Lord is taking me. Come on and give God some praise. Wait on it. Wait on it. He won't let you down. Just wait on it. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God sees everything you're going through. Oh, yeah, he does. God sees everything. He sees it. Hallelujah. And God's got an escape door for you. Hey, hey, I said, God's got an escape there for you. And sometimes because it's dark, some, sometimes you can be leaning right on it. Can I get a witness? It may be just a step before you or a step off to the side. Can I get a witness here? Oh, but God's got a way for you. 
to bring you out. And when God brings you out, <laughs> he'll bring you out on top. Can I get a witness here? That's why you wait on him. I say you wait on him <laughs> and he'll bring you out. Hey, neighbor, say, neighbor, don't get too excited that you get ahead of God. There ain't no shortcuts. There ain't no, ain't no shortcuts. There ain't no shortcut with God. Yeah. yeah, we want it right now. We want it instant. Yeah, and God said, no, no, no. My ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. As the heaven is above the earth, so is my ways above your ways. And my thoughts above your thoughts. God said, it ain't going to be your way. He said, it's going to be my way or no way. Can I get a witness here today? Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God's way is the only way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all got a whole lot of ideas in your mind. A whole lot of thoughts in your head. You just tell your neighbor, neighbor, God don't need no help. But what he does need is our faith. He don't need our help. But what he does need is our faith. And it's faith that moves mountains with God. Can I get a witness here? You just wait on the Lord. Don't try to figure things out. You just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Mm. You don't have to jump in it. You don't have to give God any help. You don't have to fight. God will fight for you. Amen. And he'll make the devil out of a liar. Can I get a witness here? He'll make the devil out of a liar. It was prophesied that David was going to be king. And David had to go through all kinds of, oh man. We've been teaching on David. David had to go through something. Oh, God. He was prophesied over he's going to be the king over Israel. But he paid the price to get there. Yes, he did. And every child of God that walks with God, if you're going to be anointed, there's a price you got to pay. Don't be trying to run. Don't be trying to get out of it. You just deal with it. You just take it. Can I get a witness? While you're taking it, God is making you. While you're taking it, God is strengthening you. While, he's, while you're taking it, God is building you up. Can I get a witness here? He's building you to go through that and something else. While you're taking it, God is making you stronger. And you'll be able to look back and say, man, that ain't nothing. And you'll be able to help somebody else. Can I get a witness here today? And you can't help nobody if you can't go through nothing. Amen. But God takes you through so that you can help somebody else. Amen. When you get through it, then you can encourage somebody. You can tell them, oh, wait on it. You coming out. Amen. Don't crack up. Don't lose your head. Don't lose your mind. Amen. You're coming out of this thing. When you're coming out, you're coming out stronger. When you're coming out, you're coming out wiser. When you're coming out, you're coming out better. So while you're waiting on them, just be of good courage. God's going to strengthen your heart. Wait. I tell the Lord. Somebody need to get up right now, run down to this altar. Amen. God is here trying to help somebody.